stocks fell today? Not much, but this is something that I kind of figured would be occurring. I mentioned something on Friday's video. I put a video out there and I kind of laid it out. Things are going to get ugly, really ugly. And I got a lot of feedback from that. And so I wanted to kind of do a follow-up video just focusing on what's going on and some of the reasons why I have an expectation that we're probably going to see a lot of selling all through August into September. Maybe we bought them out November-ish, something like that. Here's the thing. A lot of the analysts that I've been looking at their information, they're calling for a recovery all the way at the end of 2023. That's brutal. I think we're going to see some a lot of pain in the near term future, but I'm not so sure that it extends all the way to 2023. So let's take a quick look at a couple charts. I want to show you what I'm looking at and we'll try and build this case. As we move forward, I'll continually update this. I got a lot of feedback from my video that I published on Saturday, um, but it was Friday's video with all the economic data from them. So let's take a look at what happened in the market today. I want to show you some charts on the 10 year yield, some of the economic data that we're getting, the economic indicators that are really going to start pushing um, on this little bounce here. It may very well be that we've seen the high. You know, the noise we've put together, it, it'll bounce around, whatever it is. Also, another thing, I'm going to show you a trade that I'm putting on. I'm playing the long game to the downside. And the market's already bidding that move upward. And I'll show you why. Let's jump in. This chart shows you what pain looks like. And it's coming. We haven't even begun to see the downside. And I'm predicting we probably see anywhere from between 5 to 10% lower. Not from where we are now, but from the low we just printed. That'll, that'll hurt. Um, and, it, and it might be that we bounce and then move a lot of sideways for a long time. Here's the thing to remember when we're starting out. The economy drives the stock market. The stock market is nothing more than an, uh, an economic indicator itself. The health of the economy, profits, the rate of growth of profits, things like this. This is all driven by economics. And you don't really need a PhD in economics to really kind of understand this. Um, but you need a grasp on what's going on, what drives what. And in this case, we're looking at, in this chart, you see the U.S. personal expenditures as well, University of Michigan consumer sentiment. Here's the thing, personal incomes. The U.S. economy is over 70% driven by consumer consumption. So... If you want to know what's going to happen next in the stock market, you look to the biggest driving force of the economy. When it comes to government expenditures and business expenditures, they tend to be fairly, like government expenditures tend to be fairly flatline on an annual basis. They may move up slightly here and there, but it's a smaller segment. So those slight incremental increases are really not going to drive the economy too much. But the demand chain is really driven by consumers. If on a year over year basis, consumer incomes are increasing above inflation rates um, and are positive, consumption and sentiment will also move. Sometimes sentiment leads and sometimes sentiment lags expenditures. And it's sort of like a delayed reaction. If things are negative, sharply negative, what will happen is uh, the consumer will start contracting. And in this case, University of Michigan sentiment just hit an all-time historic low of 50. So the consumer is contracting. They're not going to be spending at the same pace, which means profits for companies are not going to increase at the same pace. In fact, what they might do is decrease. And we're definitely going to see that. We're seeing revenues already decline. Q1, we already saw GDP drop 1.5% for Q1. Well, if, if during Q2, the consumer 
hits an all-time historic low, their contraction of expenditures will be sharp decline. So I always look towards what's the consumer doing? How do they feel about things? Where's, what can we expect next? And in this case, an all-time historic low. This chart here goes all the way back to 1991. Um, and it may, think what's happened that we've had two or three recessions plus one of them being the Great Recession and, of course, a pandemic. And yet, it's just now that the consumer has hit an all-time historic low. So basically what you're telling me is during a global pandemic, when everything got shut down and everybody had to go home and they're stuck at home, the consumer felt better then than they do right now because of what's happening with inflation. Think that through. When we look back to the Great Recession, I mean, that was it. We weren't sure if this was going to be the biggest depression ever. We had no idea. And yet the consumer felt better then than they do today. That's how bad inflation is hitting. Hopefully that message seeps in. We don't know if we're at the all-time low. We just printed for the month of June 50. What if in July we hit 40s? Or what if in July things bounce? I'm going to leave that one open. But the consumer doesn't necessarily jump big like that. They're not going to all of a sudden hit an all-time low, then turn around in a resounding high. So keep that in mind when that works. But when you look at this chart, you can see the ebbs and the flows of expenditures and how the consumer was feeling. Sometimes they're a little ahead of the game and sometimes they're a little low. Like right now, we're seeing uh, the low in sentiment and this will probably bring expenditures down further in a couple more weeks to months. And it's something that's important to understand. Sometimes the consumer will, their incomes will hit and they'll start spending, and but maybe they're just catching up and so they still don't feel amazing about where they are and so sentiment might be a lagging indicator but typically they're fairly closely correlated you start with what they're earning then they either sp they spend it and they feel good about it or not so much so this is what we're looking at this was the dow now of course the dow sold off sharply because of interest rates and i have another chart that I'm going to be showing you here in just a second. It's the 10 year yield. Here's the thing. On Friday, I sat there and I said, you know, we had a sharp moves up, move up in um, the stock market on Friday. And I didn't feel exactly awesome about it. And sure enough, I mean, we moved up a little bit today, but ended negative. Call it a wash for the day. The 10 year yield didn't react like the stock market did. The news from University of Michigan consumer sentiment was so bad that now we're starting to think that the Federal Reserve is not going to be raising interest rates nearly as quickly. Okay, great. Awesome. Shouldn't the, the interest rates have responded exactly the same? We're pricing in about 3.5% by the end of this year. Some are calling for three, seven, five. Some are now starting to say no more than three. 10 years printing right around 320, 310, somewhere in there. I can't remember, but it's, it's, let's move to the chart. Here's the thing. The yield is continually moving higher. So if on Friday's news, we were, we, we got the assumption that, hey, listen, Interest rates are not going to go up much higher because the consumer is going to contract. Therefore, the Federal Reserve is going to have to pump the brakes a little bit on what they're doing. The 10-year should have responded. The 10-year yield went up. It went up a little bit today, too. 
which is the opposite of what it should have done. Given that, the rally we just saw Friday, the kind of sideways moves we saw today, sometime this week we're going to give that back. We saw, I think, three positive, pretty positive moves all, all week last week. Last week was a solid move back upward, and I don't need to move the chart backwards, but we're probably going to give some of that back. And at some point, we're going to start testing the bottoms again. So we might be towards the end of this here little bump that we've just seen. You want to keep tabs on interest rates. And what's going to drive the interest rates? Let's look at inflation. Let's you know keep an eye on consumer sentiment, things like this. Um, growth rates, GDP, that's going to be coming up here in July as well. Are we actually in a recession? We printed negative 1.5 Q1. The consumer is contracting more in Q2 than they did in Q1. So the revenue we're going to see pretty much all through August, all the companies that are going to be reporting then, those numbers are going to be lower than the declines we saw from Q1. Then you're going to see costs being cut by companies. Individuals getting laid off, the fat getting ch chopped away. That's going to continually ripple through the economy and less expenditures in there. This is the yield curve. So the black line is actually where we are. And the yield curve gives us an idea what's going on, how the health of the economy is. If you look at the red curve, that's the late last time we had a fairly normal yield curve, and that was all the way back in 2006. This was sort of the highest yield curve we had, and it was just before the financial crisis. Things started to kind of fall apart in, I want to say, summer 2006. 2007, of course, uh, we started seeing a lot of issues. 2008, forget about it. So after everything got shut down in 2020, the black line, the most recent, was basically flat line. And we've been sort of raising it back upward, getting it back to normalization. We're... On the long end, we're more than halfway there from where the last normal period was. That's still a long ways to away. And already we're talking about removing some of these interest rates. So 2023 is going to be really interesting how that plays out. And that means the stock market is going to sort of play out the same way. Now, here's what I'm doing. I put together a trade and let me move to another slide. Okay, I put on a risk reversal on the S&P 500. Reference was roughly 39.10, 39.20, somewhere in there this morning when I woke up. I looked at this all weekend. And I said, I'm going for this. I sold some calls, 4,200 calls, December. I bought some puts, the 3,600 puts, again, December. The idea is basically this, that the position, we've seen the high right now. And this is 300 basis points higher than current reference at 3910-ish, 3905. I don't know exactly where it finished up for this uh, for today. But my bet is that the market doesn't go any higher above 42. That it moves closer back down to 3,600 and who knows, maybe even down to about uh, 34 half, somewhere in there. Maybe as much as 32 half. That would be a big move. And it's a big possibility. There's a couple months. One of the reasons why I put on risk reversals is really simple. I've got a nice wide range. I don't care about every single little point up, down, up, down. It'll drive you nuts. But when you put on a, a concept in a range like this, you have a, a lot more sleeping power. Um, being a former FX manager, 
I'm loving my sleep in the middle of the night. I'm I, waking up three, four, five times in the middle of the night gets really old really fast. I paid one twenty-five half for the forty-two calls, forty-two hundred calls. Or I'm sorry, I brought in one twenty-five half for the forty-two hundred calls because I'm short those calls. I'm long the puts, paying one forty-seven. I'm out about twenty-three points total on this. Uh, and I'll see my, I'll look later. But this gives you an idea. First off, we're about 300 points away from both the puts and the calls. But the puts have premium over top the price of the calls. Everybody at this point now believes the 4200s won't go. That the probability is much higher for the 3600 puts to go. So you're looking at puts over calls with a little bit of juice there. Should this market start moving in the next week or so and drop pretty sharply, uh, I may just tap it and go. Just take a quick profit, make a quick buck. If it takes longer, the longer it waits, I'll look for a longer period of, say, premium on this. But my thesis is this. We've seen basically the high we're going to see in this leg right now. We're definitely not going to see 4,200. That's kind of a long shot. At the same time, probabilities are that we are going to move lower. And maybe what I can do is bring in some premium off that those puts. If we move down lower, I can sell off the puts and let the calls just whittle away. That's another option as well. So I'm going to play this every single day, kind of check in, see what's going on, looking at the VIX, volatility index, and finding out what's going on with these. But my thesis is this. Throughout August, we're going to see a lot of selling. That's when a big chunk of these moves are going to come in because the stocks are going to start reporting information regarding what's going on with revenues. The consumer has contracted. At the tail end, they printed an all-time low. Going into Q3, which will be July, August, September, we'll get the results in November-ish for, for company earnings then. Very likely, the contraction will continue, but the market might be have completely adjusted for it at that point. So that might play out by the end of, say, September, October. Going into the earnings season for Q3 in November-ish time frame, Market, market might be played out at that point. However, other analysts are saying the recovery isn't going to happen for a year after that. I think it might be a little earlier in there. Probably Q2, Q3 time frame we might see a bounce. We'll find out. So if you're looking to find out more information on how to time the market with economics, make sure you check out my video course I've got up on my website. Links are below. Thanks for the follow. Thanks for the smash on that like button. But more importantly, go ahead and uh, if you, uh, send this off. Share this video with others that you think might benefit from this. I really appreciate it. We'll see you in the next video.